Hello, in this video we are going to be using the ODBC Data Source Administrator tool. And the way that we're going to use that is we are going to create a system data source for one of our databases so that we can use it in our web database processing applications. So in previous lessons we created a database in our SQL Server software and the system data source is going to provide a connection to the SQL Server 2014 database management system. So to create this system data source in our Windows operating system, we are going to use the ODBC data source administrator tool. Now as with most things in Windows, we have many ways to get to where we need to go. Now, if you were to take a certification exam, you would need to know the proper path that Windows prefers, and that's just to go to your Start button, go to All Programs, or what's now called All Apps since Windows 8. You go to All Apps, scroll down until you find your Windows Administrative Tools. You can expand this here. Scroll down, and there is your ODBC Data Sources. You can click on that to open up the tool there. Another way you can do it is just to simply go down here and type in ODBC. And there's your ODBC Data Sources desktop app. If you can click on that, it'll open up the same thing. You can right click on this, see the actual file location. If you click on that, you will then be directed to see that that is in fact in the folder for Windows Administrative Tools and it gives you a shortcut of opening up the ODBC Data Source Administrator tool. That's just a little few ways of getting there, um, but the proper way is to go through the Start menu. Of course, those of us that use it all the time, like to create shortcuts and we will put that down on our taskbar if that is your preference. Alright, let's take a look at what we need to do next. We're going to first click on the, the System DNS tab here. And we are going to create a new system data source. As you see, we have none listed here. So we're going to click Add. And since we are referencing an SQL Server, we'll scroll down through our many driver options we have to set up our data source. And we're going to select SQL Server. We'll click Finish now. Now we're going to give it a name for this data source. And since we're going to be referencing a database that we know we have built into our server, we are going to just use the VRG one. And you need to give it a description here now. And for this one, we'll just give it a very simple one. We'll just call this the VRG database on our SQL Server 2014. very easy to know which one we have when we give it a name like this very descriptive and then we need to locate what server if you click your drop down arrow you may see that you have none listed if that's the case we're going to use the name of our server which you can find if you try to open up your SQL server and it will as you when you first create it it will give it a server name so if you don't see it there you can go and open up your SQL Server, whichever platform you're using, and under the server type you will see server name, and there is our server name. And that is exactly what we will put in. And then we'll click Next. And we can use our Windows Authentication or we can choose SQL Server. Since we're in this test environment, I only have one account. Let's go ahead and select the Windows authentication because that's what we've done in previous lessons. And you'll find out that that will work easier since I don't have any actual uh, login IDs created on the actual SQL server. We'll just click Next. And now it's, here's where we're going to change what we want the default database to be. And since I'm going to be working with VRG, I will select and see how I have options here. There's my VGR database. I'll make sure to select that one. We'll leave the default options open here. Select Next. We're going to leave this as default as well. And then select Finish. Now we can test our data source to make sure that it is working. And of course, since you just created this one, here's all the information that we've put in. You, of course, want to test it before moving on. So go ahead and click the test data source button there and you can see that as we expected this did test complete successfully. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Click OK again 
and now you can see that we have our new system data source created here in our ODBC data source administrator tool and that is all there is to creating an appropriate system data name or system data source for use with your SQL server. You can click OK as you are done with that. Good job everyone.